Hi, I'm Paweł Spychalski and welcome to the FPV University. This video was brought to you by my Patreon and YouTube supporters. If you are not one of them, then please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks a month. Have you ever wondered how the flight controller works? If so, this video is for you. Because today, in this video, on example of the INAV, I will show you the general architecture of the flight controller. What's happening inside, which major parts of the flight controller software you you can notice and how the data from all the sensors and the radio control is combined to allow your drone to do whatever you want. Either it is flippity floppy around the tree or very precision automatic GPS navigation. From a very generic point of view, the INAV architecture looks like this. Seems like a mess, but really it is not. Yes, I know there are a lot of colorful boxes over there, but in the next part of this video, we will quickly go through each of them to show you how this is connected to other boxes and how at the end it influences the output what your drone or the airplane is doing in the air. First, the colors. The green boxes are about the acquisition. Acquisition of data from the sensors and from the receiver. So, on the left side we will have the gyro acquisition, accelerometer acquisition and those are two required sensors that are required to fly or drive or whatever with INAV. You cannot have the INAV equipped flight controller without accelerometer and gyro. Every other sensor on the left side is optional and having this kind of the sensor only allows you to perform some additional kind of the actions. So we're gonna have the magnetometer acquisition, barometer acquisition, GPS acquisition, range finder and upflow. On the right side there will be radio receiver acquisition because this is the part that well connects your radio to your INAV equipped flight controller. This is the way, the channel that you use to tell the flight controller what flight controller should be doing. And the final green box is the ESC telemetry. One more time, an optional thing that only allows you to run the filtering in a slightly more precise way. The red boxes are the actuator, the two outputs from the flight controller, and one of them is motors and the second one is servos. Of course, on the multi-rotor drones you do not have servos, however, when you have the airplane or the rover, you have to have both the motors that will power your thingy and allow this thing to go through the air and of course servos that will act as the control for the control surfaces or the wheels or anything like that. The blue boxes, self-leveling, angle, PID, rate controller, motor mixer and the servo mixer are the super essential parts of every flight controller because this is the the meat, the heart of the flight controller. All the processing for the stabilization and for the position is happening in those blue boxes. On top of that, we have a set of teal boxes, which are mainly the estimator and auxiliary controllers like for example heading hold and dark green which are responsible for working with your set point. Set point is the data from your radar. Set point is a stick position that is put into the correct PID controllers. And of course the orange box has filters because you cannot really have the modern flight controller without a lot of the filters. And now let's deep dive into the most important part of every flight controller which is the stabilization. Stabilization is provided by the RAID PID controller. Whenever you hear that you have to tune your pits, we are most probably talking about the pits on the RAID PID controller. This is the most low level operation of any flight controller and any kind of the stabilization is really happening in this flight controller. This PID controller is from the left side fed from the gyro and this is very important. Only the gyro information is responsible for the stabilization. The accelerometer information is only used for the self-leveling but the stabilization itself is based only on the gyro. So the gyro signal after being filtered enters the rate PID controller as the current measurement for the concept of the measurement and the PID controller, I have a separate video only on this topic, so you might want to go there and, well, 
know how the PID controller works. And from the right side, we have the receiver signal, which is the stick position and the switches position after a filter, because yes, of course, we have to have the filter, which then is computed Both as the, the gyro data and the set point data are in the degrees per second. So. First of all, your stick position is translated into the required rotation rate in the degrees per second, and the gyro allows you to have the same kind of unit. After the rate PID controller does its magic, it passes the output of the stabilized output for all three major axes, which is roll, pitch, and yaw, to the motor mixer and the servo mixer. Because PID controller, the rate PID controller is working only with those three axes, roll, pitch and yaw, it does not have to be aware of how your drone or airplane is really achieving the stabilization. It's it doesn't know about the concept of the motor of the servos or how many motors you have or how many servos connected to which flight control surfaces you have. This is the job of the mixer. Both the motor mixers, which translate the roll pitch yaw output level to all the motors you might have on your uh, drone. And this basically means that you tune your octa or hexa or the quadcopter in exactly the same way. And also to the servo mixers, which converts the same to the servos. And to make things slightly more interesting, you might also connect direct radio outputs from your radio to your servos because for example, you would like to have the manual flight mode or be able to deploy flaps in the air. And then from motor mixer and the servo mixer, the data, the control signal is outputted to motors and servos. And if the flippity floppy around the tree is the only thing we expect from our UAV, this is the end of your flight controller. However, if you want something more, we need something more. And the first thing that you might want to know is the self-leveling, the angle mode, the horizon mode. And this functionality is provided to you by the addition of the accelerometer data. That means that the accelerometer data, the current acceleration on all three major axes is, of course, filtered because everything has to be filtered then this data is fed directly into the self-leveling angle controller which is the pid controller or rather only the p-type controller which then overrides the current set point so when you are flying in the angle your stick movements are not directly corrected to the pid controller the rate pid controller but the angle controller comes in between and overrides the set point so it drives your set point. The most three important estimators are the attitude estimator which basically combines runs the sensor fusion on the accelerometer and the gyro to give you the current angles how much the UAV is banked to each side. The altitude estimator which uses the GPS range finder and the barometer data to give you the current altitude and bear in mind it also uses to some extent accelerometer because it's able to add the current acceleration to compute the velocity and make the altitude estimation slightly more precise. And of course, at the output of the altitude estimator, we have the current altitude over the place where you armed. And the position estimator. The position estimator is fed from the upflow. Uh, of course, if you have the upflow and upflow is enabled, GPS, and the one more time accelerometer, because just like the altitude estimator, the position estimator runs the sensor fusion on the GPS and the accelerometer and to some extent on the upflow to compute the current position where the UAV is located in the 2D space. And of course, the heading estimation, which gives the flight controller the info where it's pointed comparing to north. Bear in mind, we will for now ignore the heading hold controller because this box basically is used only when the heading hold mode is enabled and this is not really happening that often. The data from the four major estimators, the attitude, heading, altitude and the position is fed to the NAV engine and the NAV engine, when of course enabled, 
combined with the current set point information is responsible for all the GPS assisted flight modes. Internally, it's just a set of additional PID controllers that converts the inputs from all the estimators and the current set point into the override for the set point that makes your UAV or the rover to go or stay in the place where it should go or stay. We will cover the NAV engine in the separate video, so for today it's fully enough to remember that it takes the data from the estimator, combines this thing with the current set point and prepares a set of overrides for the RAID PID controller to drive the UAV in the place where it should be at any given time. And in layman terms, this is exactly how INAV works. Of course, each of those boxes can be a pretty complex code. However, the general architecture, once you think about it, it's not really that much of the rocket science. It's basically a sensor fusion, plus the information from your set point, from your radio, plus a bunch of PID controllers. And to count it correctly, I think the total number of the PID controllers is like maybe even close to 20. However, you we usually tune only three of those to make your INAV, UAV, or the rover, drone, multi-rotor, airplane, whatever you want, in the way that you want it to be. 